Amen. Amen. So you're in Romans chapter 2, and stay there, and uh, even when we turn a little later, I want you to stay there too. We're going to come back again, but you're in Romans 2, but I want to, before we uh, get into it, I want to read to us from Deuteronomy chapter 1. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 1, you shall not respect persons in judgment, but you shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of the man, for the face of man, for the judgment is God's, <coughs> and so on and so forth. And what I want to point out there is that when it comes to this, uh, this idea of respect of persons, there's really a couple ways you can look at it. And of course, in Deuteronomy, he's saying you're not going to respect them in judgment when it comes to hearing the small as well as the great. So one area in which people can show respect of persons is when it comes to this area of you know, social standing, you know, economic uh, standing. You know, they're, they're talking about a person maybe who has a lot of wealth versus a person who doesn't have a lot of wealth. That's one form of being a respecter of persons. And God, of course, we know is warning there that, you know, you shouldn't just let somebody off the hook because they've got a lot of money. You know, the judge isn't supposed to, you know, pervert judgment of the law because he's, you know, maybe the, maybe the, guy, the, the rich guilty guy will meet him out back with a handful of bills, you know, or he'll get a little kickback later. Okay, God says he wants a, you know, a perfect and just judgment. He's we're to have a righteous judgment that does not respect persons. So that's one way to look at respect of persons. But what I want to focus in on tonight is there in Romans chapter 2 is where we see there's another form of respecting persons. And it says in verse 10, But glory and honor, peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Now, of course, he's referring here to the Jews as in the Jewish nation. And we understand also that you know, it's possible for, for anybody to become a Jew. It's not necessarily just a race of people. Okay? But I believe this is a good example of showing us that there's one way, another way in which we can be a respecter of persons is when it comes to a person's ethnicity. When we can look at a person's, their, their background, their nationality, and, and we can become a respecter of persons in this way as well. And we're being warned of that here. And he's saying, look, there is no respecter of persons with God. Whether it's a, in an economic situation, whether it's between the small and the great, or whether it's between the Jew and the Gentile. If it's an economic thing or if it's a nationality thing, you know, God is not a respecter of persons. You know, he's not, he's not going to sit there and judge people based on their ethnicity. Therefore, neither should we. Okay, and what I want to preach, the title of the sermon is racism, is uh, racism and respect of persons. Racism and respect of persons. Because really that's what racism is. You know, racism is something that people uh, form in their minds, the feelings that they have. Uh, it, it comes from a place of they, they prefer one race above another. You know, and I use that word race. It's not really a biblical term. but We all know what I'm talking about, you know, when we talk about the races. And it's not really something I like to use because I don't think it's a really good term. Uh, but it's out there, so we're going to use it, okay? Really what we're referring to is a person's nationality, their ethnic background, okay? And some people get this idea that if they're from a certain ethnicity, that somehow they're better than another person because they're not from that same ethnicity. And what that is, is racism, okay? And there's a lot of it. Even to this day in this country, of course, we know our, our, hist our, uh, our country has just a horrendous <laughs> history in this area where, where white people thought they were so much better than the Africans that they enslaved them and brought them over here and made them, and made them work. So this is something, and we say, oh, that's over, that's gone, that's past. No, it hasn't. That kind of thing is still out there. People still have this kind of thinking, this kind of bigotry in their mind. And God doesn't, and God never has, and God never will. And that's why we need to make sure that we are not uh, falling prey to this. Now, do I think that there's anybody in this room that's, that has, is struggling with this? No, I don't. Okay, I don't think anyone's going to go home tonight and burn a cross in somebody's yard, you know, or something like that, you know. But hey, you know, this is something that could creep in. You know, we have a lot of young people in the room, a lot of, a lot of kids and teenagers, you know, they, that, are, that are, have other influences than just what's going on here at church. You know, maybe they have a friend or a teacher or an aunt or an uncle, who knows? They have some other influence in their life that might start to take them aside and try to teach them, hey, you know what, we're, we're from such and such background, we're better just because of our ethnicity. And we even, you know, this is something that people fall into because man has a very tribal mentality. We like to get with other people. We like to get in groups, identify. We find our identity in, in other groups. I mean, you know, professional football is a great example of this. You know, I'm for this team. I'm for that team. You know, and, and when their team wins, it's we won, right? Even though you didn't do anything, right? You didn't throw a football. You didn't call a shot. 
you weren't even on the field, right? But there's this idea of we're part of something bigger than ourselves, a tribal mentality. You know, and that's kind of an innocent form of it when it comes to, to football and, and sporting and sports and things like that. But when it comes down to, <coughs> you know, I'm going to get a lot of a sense of pride and belonging because of the color of my skin, because of my ethnic background, that I'm going to lift myself up above another person. That's wicked. That's wrong. It's respect of persons. And, and Bible says that we are not to be respecters of persons, whether it's in an economic situation you know, when it comes to judgment or just in preferring another person above another because of their ethnicity. So where does this come from? Really, where does this come from? Well, like I mentioned to, are you, are, to you already, and keep something in Romans, go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Is it kind of, obviously it's a very, uh, what was I saying? It's a, it's a tribal mentality, right? This man wants to belong to something bigger than him. And really what it is, is it's carnal. You know, to sit there and say that I'm better than somebody because of my ethnic background, because of my race, you know, that's a very carnal mind. Yeah. To look down on another person or say disparaging things about another person's ethnicity comes from a very base and carnal person. Yeah. It's, a very, it's a very carnal thing. That's where it stems from, is a carnal mind. Look here in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, and verse 1. Paul wrote, And I, brethren, <coughs> could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal. Saying, look, I wanted to talk to you like a grown-up. I wanted to talk to you about spiritual things. I wanted to discuss the deep things of God with you. I wanted to impart some spiritual gift unto you, but I could not. Why? Because, but I had to speak of carnal things. And why was that? Why was it that he had to speak of carnal things? Even as unto babes in Christ. He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. And where there is, whereas there is among you envying and strife, and divisions are you not carnal and walk as men so they had a lot of things going on here they had envying they had the strife but one of the other things that they had going on in the Corinthian church that Paul rebukes here is their divisions and where was it that they were dividing what was the dividing line we'll look there in verse 4 for while one saith I am a Paul of Paul and another I am of Apollos are you not yet carnal now I'm not I don't think they were dividing over because Paul was, you know, a Jew and Apollos was a Greek. Maybe that was going on. I don't know. It was probably just a, a, a matter of they they liked one guy's preaching more than another. And so they're having this division in their church. And and who knows? Maybe there was, you know, I don't know exactly what that division was that caused one to go to Paul, one to go to Apollos. But he's saying it ought not be there. And he's saying, he says, when you say I am of Paul and another I am of Paulus, are you not, not, not yet, are you not yet carnal? Are you not carnal when you have this division over men in, in, in your life? When you're preferring one person above another, you're being a respecter of persons. And he's saying, who is Apollos? Who, who then is Paul and who is Apollos but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? So Paul had the understanding and, and knowledge that, you know, he was nobody. And that to lift him up and exalt him as somebody you know, and, and to, to, to prefer him over another person was meaningless. It was, and what was it? What did he call it? He called it carnal. So, that to, so t for us to sit back, you know, and to prefer another person for whatever reason, you know, uh, over another person and treat them better than we might somebody else is a carnal mind. It's a very carnal thing to do. It's base. Quite frankly, it's childish. Yeah. And really, that's, that's where we see most of, you know, when it comes to this idea of racism, and preferring people's ethnicity or poking fun at people's ethnicity or saying disparaging things about certain ethnicities, you know, that comes, where, where do you normally find that type of thing? When do you start to learn about that and hear these off-color jokes? Usually like junior high, <laughs> high school. I mean, that's where I heard them. That's where I heard some of the just, you know, I look back now and say, man, those are the worst jokes in the world. Those, you should never even repeat that. That's wicked. You know, I would never, I would never want to repeat that. To even, 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 if, even amongst, you know, people of the same, you know, skin color. Like, let's joke about this. No, because it's immature. Not only is it just carnal and stupid and wicked, it, it's coming from a childish place. It's not, and it's not clever. You know, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a wit type of thing. It, it, it's a very base type of uh, humor, right? So, and that's what Paul's pointing out here. Look, when you have these divisions, when you're preferring people above another person, it's a carnal thing. It's a childish thing. It's as a babe in Christ would. <coughs> and really that's what racism, prejudice, you know, and, and bias based on these carnal reasons, it's a sign of a person's immaturity. 
you know, when they're dividing lines, you know, along, you know, uh, the skin color or their, their, their ethnic background, you know, th what it's showing you is that person is very immature and they haven't grown their, 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 you know, their mental horizons do not expand very far. And <laughs> I mean, what could be more childish? What could be more carnal than to be biased towards somebody over the pigmentation of their skin? I mean, that's all it is. It's just pigment. It's just skin color. But I'm going to say that this person is less than me, that I'm better than this person. I'm going to separate from this group, forbid my chil children from marrying this person because of skin color. What could be more carnal? What could be more childish? What could be more base than that? You know, when it, it, I'm sure that we could think of some things, right? The point being, you know, the emphasis I'm trying to make here is that that is a very carnal and childish thing, mentality to have. <laughs> Look there in uh, verse 6, and he goes on and he says, And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that you might, not, that you might learn in us not to think above men that which is written, that no one, uh, that none of you, no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that, that thou didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as thou hast not received it? I mean, why would we look down on somebody or disparage somebody about their skin color or their ethnicity as if they had any choice in the matter? As if they had any control over what family they were born into? As if they had any control what color they, they are going to be? You know, Michael Jackson aside, of course, right? <laughs> he couldn't figure it out. I'm not going to go off on that, I promise. But that, that, that's the point. I mean, who, that's what Paul, kind of Paul's saying. Who maketh thee to differ from another? Why are you glorying in men? You know, why are you puffing yourself up in this matter? You, it's, you didn't receive that. You couldn't do anything about it to change it if you wanted to. Right. And quite frankly, you go over to Titus chapter 1. If we see this type of attitude creep in, if we hear somebody expressing this kind of an attitude, even in a joking manner. Now, I get it. We all, there's stereotypes. We poke fun about certain things that are harmless. But there's a line, and we all know where it is. We know where that line is and it, where, you know, when it's going too far. And, and you know, stereotypes definitely come from, a, a, you know, there's a grain of truth in all of them. That's where they stem from. So I'm not saying, you know, if you make some, some you know, joke about some stereotype. I've probably made six this today alone, but, you know, <laughs> they're all escaping me now. But, you know, none of them were off color. None of them were disparaging of another person's ethnicity. None of them were trying to put somebody down or make them feel bad or, or disrespectful. Right. You know, there was all good fun and, and, and they were harmless. But when it gets to this base, just childish, carnal, just slanderous, you know, uh, uh, just, just, you know, just out of line, you know, it, it needs to be rebuked. Yeah. We don't just go, well, you know, that's the way they are. It ought to be rebuked. When we hear it, we ought to rebuke it and tell that person to grow up and not just think, oh, well, you know, that's, that's just the way it is because it's not funny. You know, that person needs to grow up, you know, not you know, more for their sakes than anybody. They need, to, they need to grow up and quit being a base carnal babe and get a spiritual bone in their body and start to learn that there's more to life than just making fun of other people and, and making, you know, trying to make yourself feel better by putting other people down. I mean, I, we learned that in like the fifth grade. You know, I could still remember being sat down in the class and learning about warm fuzzies and cold pricklies. Who remembers that? You know, when somebody said something to you that you didn't like that was mean, you know, say, hey, that's a cold prickly. You know, it's not a, a nice thing to have said. I want to hear some warm fuzzies out of you. You know, <laughs> we learned that in the fifth grade. I still remember that today. Just basic things. And then when, so when we see somebody expressing this kind of an attitude of just being disparaging, crude, you know what it is. I don't have to sit up here. I'm not going to start giving examples. Okay. But when you know, you know when somebody's crossed the line in this area, it needs to be rebuked harshly. That's what it says in Titus chapter 1. Look at verse 10. He said, For there are many unruly and vain talkers. And really, that's what it is. Unruliness. People just start running their mouth and blowing off their mouth and start to say things they shouldn't be saying. They have no control over their mouth. And we should, we'll talk about that in a minute. And what is it that comes out of their unruly mouth? Vain talk. You know, that's what a lot of this, this, this type of attitude is. It's just a lot of vain 
talking. It's not edifying to the, hear, uh, to the hearers. It's not going to help them in their spiritual growth. The whole purpose of what's being said is to make them feel like dirt or try to make them feel inferior. It's vain. It's vanity. He says there are many unruly and vain talkers. You know, we don't need more of them. There's already many out there. Let's not, let's not add to that, that group. And he says, especially they of the circumcision whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole households, teaching things they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans are always liars, evil beasts and slow bellies. So what Paul is saying here, he's, he's testifying to what one of these people of the circumcision said, one of their own prophets. And this prophet, is, he's quoting him, or saying, uh, saying, the Cretans are always liars. You know, and what is he basing that on? You know, maybe his personal experience with a Cretan here and there. The Bible says for all, you know, you know, we're all liars. You know, everyone's told a lie, you know. But he's saying, look, Cretans are always liars. You know, those Cretans, which is, you know, a, a certain country, a nationality, they're all liars. What if I got up here to say, got up here today and just said, you know, just picked on a country or maybe just a state or an ethnicity and just said, you know, such and such people, they're always liars. More, that's way worse than just me just saying, hey, so-and-so is a liar. Right. And, you know, not just saying he's a liar, but just saying always liars. <laughs> just painting with this huge broad brush and just disparaging a whole group of people. The Cretans are always liars. Do you really think that's true? That the Cre like every Cretan was just constantly lying? They'd never get anything done. They'd just be, everyone would be, you know, if that were the case, <laughs> how would they even function as society? You know, but that's what this guy said. Hey, they're, they're, they're always liars. They're evil beasts. You know, the, 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 think about what he's saying, a beast. He's dehumanizing them. Yep. They're evil. You know, there's no, nothing good about them. They're, they're animals. And that's what you see a lot of when it comes to this area of, uh, <coughs> you know, ethnicity and race. When one group of people is being oppressed by another, that's exactly what they do. Yep. Right. They say they're not human. They're subhuman. It's, you know, it's okay to treat them like this. It's okay to, you know, just slaughter them. It's okay to just put them in chains. It's okay to just, you know, steal from them because they're not even human. And there's, you know, the, I don't want to go on, on and on about it, but that's exactly what this guy is doing here. He's just saying, well, we could talk about the creation however we want because we all know they're just a bunch of evil beasts, right? We all know it's okay to just go over to Africa and just put them on ships and who cares if they, you know, half of them die on the way over here and then we'll just, you know, put them into slavery and to hard bondage for their whole life for generations because we all know that, you know, they're not even human. You know, they're subhuman. You know, they're, they're like what, you know, uh, and that's, the, you know, this, let me go off a little bit. That's what kills me about Darwin's book, yep. The or Origin of Species. You know, that's not the full title. Yep. Go read the full title, friend. Origin of species, or how does it go? Or the, the, the survival of the preferred races. Something like that. But it has the preferred races. You know, everybody that's not a white European should probably take offense to that. <laughs> Everyone that wasn't the same color as Charles Darwin should probably say, uh, no thank you know, burn that book right. well, for many reasons. But you know, that's the mentality that people creep in, uh, have, that creeps in. They say, well, you know, we can treat this certain race of people a certain way because they're not human. It doesn't matter. They're evil beasts. They're slow bellies. Now, what does slow belly mean? You know, you're, you tell me after the service. I'd love to know. Right? I've always wondered about that one. And then he goes on and Paul says, this witness is true. Now, what he's saying in, in verse 13 is not, yeah, that's true about the Cretans. He's saying, what I'm telling you about this prophet who's just slandering the Cretans is true. He's saying, my witness, this witness of what one of their own said is true. That's what verse 13 means. And what does he say when he says, look, what I'm telling you is the truth. This is what they say. This is their attitude. What does he tell them to do? Just shrug it off? He says, rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith for their own sake. Not because the poor little Cretans, you know, he wants to make sure that they feel okay. He wants that guy rebuked because, you know, he needs to get sound in the faith. He needs to grow up and quit being so carnal and quit being such a babe. <clears throat> So we see, you know, where does racism or respecting of persons in the area of ethnicity stem from? It stems from a carnal mind. 
It stems from a very base and childish uh, uh, person, a very immature person, especially spiritually. And we see also that it should be rebuked. I mean, do we not see that? That's what Paul said. When you see this type of attitude creeping in where whole people are just disparaging ethnicities, rebuke it. Don't tolerate it. <laughs> and why is that? Because racism and respect of persons is a sin. Amen. It just, it's a sin. It's not just, oh, they come from a different generation. Things were different back then. You know, it's okay for your 70-year-old grandpa to drop the N-word because, you know, that's just what they called him when he was growing up. He needs to change. Yep. He needs to snap out of it. Right. You know, and, and, uh, and, 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 and because it's a sin. Uh, go, go over to James chapter 2. Game, James chapter 2. Because you can't sit there and tell me that being racist isn't being a respecter of persons. I mean, what could be more a respecter of persons? I think we all saw that in Romans, right? Where he said that, you know, that, that to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respecter of persons with God. <clears throat> You're going to James chapter 2, and I'll read to you from 1 Timothy chapter 5. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. So this is a charge, not a suggestion. Not, hey, you might want to try this out and see how it works for you. I charge thee. He says, that thou observe these things without preferring one before another and doing nothing by partiality. You know, we shouldn't be preferring each other and, and doing it, things by partiality. You know, well, I'm going to do things this way so that so-and-so benefits. I'm going to do things this way so so-and-so doesn't benefit. I prefer so-and-so's, uh, you know, company or their, you know, they give me nice, whatever, you know, whatever you prefer somebody for some reason. So now you're going to do things with partiality with them in mind. And you're going to put other people out. You know, he's saying don't do that. He's charging you not to do that. And you know, that that can be more than just, you know, uh, you could apply that in so many areas, you know, and how we ought to treat one another. But look there in James chapter 2 verse 1, we'll see that racism or respect of persons when it comes to a person's ethnicity is partiality and it is sin. He says, "My brethren, verse 1, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons." For if there come un, uh, unto your assembly a man with a gold ring and got, uh, got goodly apparel, and there come also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit under my footstool, are you not then partial in yourselves? Are you become, are, uh, uh, and are you become judges of evil thoughts? Jump down to verse 8. He says, If ye if fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if ye have respect of persons, ye commit sin. Amen. Having respect of persons for whatever reason, what, in whatever area of life, whatever, for whatever reason you're preferring somebody else above another and putting another person, you know, disadvantaging them or disparaging them, you know, it, 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 it's a sin, my friend. I mean, the Bible couldn't be any clearer than that. And it's interesting that both of these books address this issue about not preferring, doing nothing by partiality, about not preferring one before another, about not having a respect of persons. They both address this issue, right? And they also both address the taming of the tongue. They also talk about the tongue. And that's really, <coughs> you know, th that's, and I don't think that's a coincidence, you know, because here's the thing, you know, most puffed up racist fools, they can't help but let people know. I mean, think about it. If you think that you're just the superior, you are the master race, right? <laughs> you are just superior. I am better than every other race, you know? You think you're going to be able to keep that to yourself? Waking up every day just knowing I'm better than everybody. I'm better than a whole group of people. Every other race is inferior. Those people, they can't help. They're like, like vegans, right? <laughs> you know how somebody's a vegan? You, you know how to tell? You don't have to. They'll tell you. <laughs> like a person who's run a marathon, right? You know if I, how, how persons run a marathon? You don't have to tell them. They'll tell you. Right? You know how a person's a flat earther? Flat earthers can't keep it in either. Just, just got it out, man. <laughs> it's the same thing with, with people who are, who, uh, you know, think that they're better because of their ethnicity. Well, I'm better. It's going to come out. It's, it's going to come out of their mouth. I mean, it's no coincidence that both these books deal with both of these issues. 
not preferring people above another, not putting other people down, and taming the tongue. Right? <coughs> Go back over to uh, uh, Romans chapter 12. So why should we even con be concerned with this tonight? Why should we even uh, you know, listen to the preaching and, and consider what the Bible says on this subject? Well, one, because you know, we want to grow up. You know, if we know somebody or we ourselves are caught up in this type of carnal based thinking, you know, we need to remind ourselves or that person that, hey, maybe you should grow up a little bit. Maybe you should quit being so carnal and, and base and perhaps, uh, you know, even other things, you know, uh, just out of line and vulgar. It should be rebuked and we should listen too because it's a, it's a sin to be racist. It's a sin to have respect of persons, to be partial in yourselves. And, and not only that, you know, but racism and this, this dividing along these lines, and any line really, but tonight we're specific, specific, eh, specifically talking about dividing over, you know, th what shade of color uh, your skin is, which is so carnal. You know, that opposes unity. How is that going to be unity? What, you know, if we were to say, if you guys were to come in here next Sunday and say, okay, you know, I'm going to have a little color chart, like, you know, like the paint samples, you know, and I'm going to hold it up next to your face and I'm say, oh, you sit over here. Oh, you sit over here. Oh, you're in the back. Oh, you come right up front. You know, that would be causing division, wouldn't it? Right. Wouldn't you feel divided? Wouldn't you feel kind of like put out of society or not part of the group? If, you know, like, like we used to do in this country, you know, if you were African, I mean, if you were black, you had to get in the back of the bus. Oh, you're, you're the wrong color, back of the bus. That's division. And we shouldn't have that. We shouldn't have that in our thinking. You know, especially when the house of God. Are you in Romans 12? Did I have you go there? Look at Romans 12, verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Go over to Ephesians chapter 4. Should I have you go there? Ephesians chapter 4. He's, like, he's saying, look, be the same mind one toward another. <clears throat> Don't sit here and have these divisions. Don't sit here and have this, this preferring one above another for whatever reason. It's carnal and it opposes unity within the church. You know, that kind of a thing. That's why we have to be careful with what comes out of our mouth. You know, and often if what comes out of our mouth it falls into this category, if it's racist, if it's, if it's just an out of the line, over the top statement, you know, that's coming from the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And when that happens, when things go out, you know, what's said can cause division in people. Then people are going to say, well, you know, I don't want anything to do with that guy. And rightly so. You know, maybe until he changes his ways or shows me something better out of, out of his mouth or says something edifying or convinces me otherwise, I'm just not going to have anything to do with that person. And, and, well, what if that happens within the local church? That's not good. That's, that's not what we want. We are to be endeavoring to keep the unity. Look there in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. I therefore, Ephesians 4, verse 1, the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called with all lowliness and meekness. You know, lowliness and meekness. Uh, uh, with long suffering, forbearing one another, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. You know, that you're not exactly endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit when you're, when you're disparaging somebody because of their race. You know, and it can happen even in, in churches. I mean, do we not, I mean, was there not segregation in this country? Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I, wasn't there a time in our country where white folk drank from the, the white fountain or the, this fountain and the black folk drank from the black fountain? You know, the Jim Crow laws. You know, we can vote because we're white. And you can't because you're black. You know, the last place we want that is th that anywhere. We don't want that anywhere. Right. We definitely don't want it in a church, yeah. you know. <clears throat> now, let me just say this. I will say that, you know, it, it, churches can divide based on your primary language. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a Korean church or a, or a Hispanic church if they're speaking Spanish, if they're speaking Korean. You know, it's for that language. Not, we're a, we're a, we're a Korean church because we only let Koreans in here. That's, <laughs> that's the wrong reason. And churches divide along that line right there. There are churches that just say, well, this is, we go to this church because everyone there is the same color as me. That's why I go there. 
you know, the house of God should be a mix. And praise God, this church is. You know, we have a mix. You know, Faithful Word in Tempe is a mix of, of ethnicities. I love that. That's why it's so stupid when people accuse our pastor of being racist. Right. Because newsflash, being a sodomite is not a race. Yeah. Your, your, you know, your, uh, your uh, how do I say this without saying that word? Proclivity. How about this? Yeah, your proclivity to being a faggot. <laughs> there we go. Uh, <laughs> how, does that, how is that a race? Right. That's not a race, friend. Oh, I was born that way. No, you weren't. It doesn't exist. It's not true. You've been lied to. You've believed a lie. There is no gay gene. Fag gene. Sorry. I got corrected in the preaching class. Don't use that word to talk about these people gay. That's God's word. Let's bring it back. Amen. The fag gene is what I meant to say. Amen. Right? <clears throat> That's why it's so dumb when people accuse our pastor of being racist because they want to take you know, the filth of homosexuality and say, oh, this is, this, this is a race of people. Right. No, they're not. You know, if they're any race, it's in a race to hell. <clears throat> so he's saying, look, you got to endeavor to keep the spirit, you know, and, and, and racism and ethnicity and, and, and preferring one above another. And, you know, we can apply this just be beyond uh, skin color. You know, maybe we just don't like somebody or we put somebody else down in our minds or treat them poorly because of just whatever reason. You know, that's not endeavoring to keep the spirit of unity, right. which is what we're supposed to be doing. How about, how about this? We see that this is a sin. Here's a perfect example of how this type of thing plays out. This type of base carnal thinking is when people start to oppose interracial marriage. Now look, if you have that preference for yourself, that's fine. You know, and I'm not even going to, I wouldn't even go so far as to say as you should, if you have a preference for your children, I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's your household. You do what you want. Okay? For me and, me and my house, you know, they can... They can marry any skin color they want. It does not matter to me. Okay? <clears throat> but people will oppose interracial marriage and say it's a biblical stance. It's not. That is not a biblical stance at all. You can't, you can't show me in the scripture where it says that white people should only marry white people. And black people should only marry black people. And brown people should only marry brown people. It's not there. Go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. And again, it just come, it's just so stupid. This whole idea of you know, ho holding somebody accountable for the color of their skin or putting them down or, or, based, or judging them based on this. The Bible says in Jeremiah 13, can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Is what it says in Jeremiah. You know, and e Ethiopians you know, are from Africa. It's talking about black people. You know, and if you've known any people from Africa, I mean, they are black people. There's like black, and then there's, you know, you're from Africa, black. Yeah. Right? So this is what the, that's what we're talking about here, black people. You say, why are you bringing that up? You're already getting nervous. Right? Well, because Moses married an Ethiopian woman. And newsflash, Moses wasn't black. I don't think he was white either. You know? He was probably of a Middle Eastern look he had to guess, but he certainly wasn't black and he certainly wasn't an Anglo-Saxon European. <clears throat> now look there in, in, oh you're in Acts, I'll just read to you. In, in remember Numbers chapter 12, and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he'd married. For he married an Ethiopian woman. People say, see right there. <laughs> but that doesn't say God disapproved of it. Yeah. That's just telling you what Miriam and Aaron did. And by the way, you know, shortly thereafter, Miriam was struck with leprosy for a time. Yep. And Moses had to pray for God to recover her. So God doesn't disapprove of this. God's not saying he shouldn't have done that. That was carnal based people. And really, if you know that story, what was really in their hearts is that they wanted Moses' position. They wanted to be have the rank and clout that he had. And that was just their excuse to, to try and bring him down. But look there in Acts chapter 8, we'll see another Ethiopian. Of course, this is a story about the Ethiopian eunuch. Acts chapter 8, verse 26. And the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise, and go toward the south, unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem unto Gaza, which is desert. And he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, an eunuch of great authority, and Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all his treasure. So the Holy Spirit's telling Philip, you know, go down and preach the gospel, to this Ethiopian, to this black guy, okay? Again, 
He's not black. Philip. You say, well, why are you bringing this up? Well, oh, I don't know, because there's some people that believe that black people don't have souls. Yep, it's true. I've heard people testify that they were going into witness in some, in some ghetto somewhere, and someone's like, why are you wasting your time? They don't even have souls. <laughs> but here you have a biblical example of God specifically taking an individual, his, one of his preachers, one of his prophets, and telling him and, and singling out this, this Ethiopian, this black guy, and saying, go preach in the gospel. So we know, again, this kind of thinking, this racist, this bigotry when it comes to people's ethnicity is not biblical. And it stems from a carnal mind that doesn't understand spiritual things. Because if they were spiritual, they'd be reading their Bible and they would have read this. And they would have said, oh, well, black people do have souls. <clears throat> so he, he sends them down here to the Ethiopian who had charge of all her treasure and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. He was returning, verse 28, and sitting in his chariot, read Isaiah the prophet, which is Isaiah. Then the spirit said unto Philip, go near and join thyself to this chariot. And Philip ran thither to him and heard, that him, heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understand, uh, understand us that, uh, uh, thou what thou readest. And he said, How can I except man, some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So, you know, th this opposition to uh, you know, people based on their race just is not biblical. It's not there. And, you know, <laughs> You know, Philip gets up in the chariot and preaches in the gospel because because God loves him. Because yeah. God is not a respecter of persons. Yep. God doesn't care that he's from Ethiopia. God doesn't care that he's black. God doesn't care that he's not the same color as Philip. It doesn't matter. You know, and, and there's, there's whole groups of people out there today that think that they're special to God because of their ethnicity, because of their supposed lineage. And it's just, it's just not true. God does not prefer people over another group of people because of who their daddy was or who their granddaddy was. You know, we should never have that type of an attitude where, you know, if we find ourselves in a neighborhood or around people that are not like us, say, well, I can't wait to get out of here. I can't wait to get back to people that are more like me so I can preach them the gospel. We should be willing to preach to anybody, even if they're different from us. You know, Philip didn't get up there in the, in the chariot. Imagine he got up there and said, oh, you got to sit in the back. <laughs> Ethiopian. Is that his attitude? No. He got up there and preached the gospel. And the man got saved. <clears throat> so why, why talk about all this? Oh, well, because, you know, people need to grow up and quit being carnal. Uh, because it should be rebuked. Because racism is, is impartiality in any form is a sin. Because it opposes unity in the, in the local church. And it still exists today, as I mentioned earlier. Why I bring it up? Because it still is going on even today. You know, it comes up in people's personal bias all the time. I mean, I'm sure people struggle with that. You know, sometimes people, especially if you came up in a household that promoted it. You know, if you're around people that your parents taught you that this type of, you should not be around this type of people or all these, you know, all these creations are all like this. You know, just made some generalized, just, you know, wide, you know, just painting with a wide brush about just some group of people and you were influenced like that as your childhood. You saw how your parents behaved towards people of certain ethnicities. You know, you might struggle with this. You might have to come up and say, whoa, my, my thinking has been affected by, you know, my parents or... Uh, culture or something like that. It still exists today. Probably, if we were honest, you know, maybe in some of us, even in our own personal biases, you know, we see somebody of a certain ethnicity and we instantly think, oh, they must be like this. Oh, they must be like that. <coughs> it comes up, it exists today in public policy. You say, no, we freed the slaves. You know? Uh, you know, we got rid of Jim Crow laws. You know, I, you know, I don't want to go on and on about this, but I've, I've read about this subject. You know, Jim Crow laws have not gone anywhere. They they exist in another form today. It's called the 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 the, the felony uh, penal system. You know, in our in our own justice system, we have a form of Jim Crow laws. If you're a felon, you can't own a gun. If you're a felon, you can't vote. If you're a felon, a lot of the same things that they opposed upon uh, in, in in the form of Jim Crow laws, you know, are still imposed today on 
felons. And guess who makes up the vast majority of felons in this country or in prison inmates? Black people. And you know what? I don't say that disparagingly. I don't say that to, to put them down. I say that because that's just the way it is, unfortunately. Because they are caught in a system that targets them. They're caught in a culture <coughs> that promotes that type of lifestyle. And they still suffer from it. You know, go read, uh, go read on the subject. You know, it, it, it still exists today even in our public policy in the form of our federal penitentiaries. Um, <coughs> you know, and it, and, it, and it affects probably every group of people. You know, it's funny whenever you talk about, you know, we bring up racism, you know, we instantly think of all the racist white people probably, right? We instantly think of the Ku Klux Klan, the Nazis, and stuff like that. But you know what I found in, in my time uh, on this earth? <laughs> is that it, every race, every ethnicity has racist people in it. And I've even, I've even heard somebody say, well, you know, this ethnicity is even more racist than this ethnicity. That's kind of a racist statement. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like saying, you know, the Cretans are all always liars, right? They're slow bellies. But it's true, it affects every people group. Every single, you know, every, uh, you can find the racist Hispanic guy. You can find the racist black guy. You can find the racist Puerto Rican. You could probably even go find a racist, you know, uh, Inuit up in Alaska. You know, <laughs> every people group is going to think there's going to have people among them that think that their ethnicity is better, and that should prove to you right there that nobody's is. You know, if everybody's ethnicity is better than the other person's, then obviously nobody's is. <coughs> How can you all be right? So racism, you know, I want to kind of round it up, but just, you know, I think I've proven today that God's against it, yeah. that God disapproves of it, that it's a form of respecting persons and we're not to be, that, that God just flat out calls it sin and that it opposes unity in the local church and in our own lives, but it's an unbiblical concept. You know, go over to Revelation chapter 14. And I, and I just want to let everyone know, even, even, if, even if you're not necessarily... Maybe you don't like Brother Corbin, not because of, you know, my face <laughs> or the color of my skin. Or maybe it's nothing to do with my physical appearance at all. Maybe you just like, don't like me for, you know, my personality, which I just can't imagine why you would, right? But maybe there's just something about me you don't like. Well, you know what? You better get used to me because I'm going to be around for a long time. And so are you because we're all headed to the same place. Now, I will say this. There's going to be a lot of people in heaven and if there's somebody you don't like down here, it's probably going to be pretty easy to lose them. You know, if you want to shake them in heaven, you probably have a pretty easy time of it, right? <laughs> <coughs> but we might as well just go ahead and start getting used to each other. Amen. You might as well just go ahead and start getting used to the way that person looks. You might as well just go ahead and get used to, you know, that shade of skin. You might as well just go ahead and get used to it. The way that, col that color of hair, those color of eyes. Because it's not going to change. You know, sorry, Mormons, we're not all going to end up white and delightsome, yeah, right. you know, if we live right. We're not all going to get to heaven and be white cherubs. You know, we're gonna ha we're gonna, I think we're going to maintain our ethnic identity to some degree up there. Amen. And I'm glad for it. You know, I, I, it would be boring if everybody looked the same way. You know, if everyone was as pasty and pale as me, <laughs> that would be a sad existence in heaven, right? <laughs> amongst other things that I am. But look here in Revelation chapter 14, verse 6. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel but to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment is come, and worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of water. He preached to the whole earth, friend. He preached... To every nation. He preached to every kindred, every tongue, every language, and people. He didn't just say, I have an exclusive message for a certain ethnicity. He preached to everybody. Because everybody, you know, regardless of what their background is, <coughs> has an opportunity to get saved. You know, it, the black guy can go to heaven just as easily as the white guy. Yep. The Hispanic guy can go to heaven just as easily as the black guy. The Japanese guy, the Chinese guy, the, the, the Asian, they can all go to heaven just as easily as anybody else. And that's why God preaches to everyone. And that's why this, this immature idea of thinking that some people are, are inferior to you because of their color of skin 
it, it just deserves to flat out be rebuked and, it, and it's something that just should not be tolerated. Did Jesus not say in Mark 6, 16, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? Not just the ones that you like, the way they look. Go to Revelation chapter 7. You know, when we get there, we're all going to maintain our, our ethnic identity. I believe that. You know, we're going to be able to look at other people and say, oh, they must have been from this part of the world. Because <clears throat> look here in, in Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. And after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindred and tongue and, peoples, and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hand. So John there, what is he doing? He didn't go up and ask every one of these people, hey, could you tell me where you're from? Because they all look the same. I didn't know what part of earth or what nation they were. I thought they were all European. He didn't say that. Because they all, it turns out when you get to heaven, everyone's a certain color. No, he just beheld them. A great multitude. And he said that he saw all nations and all kindreds and people and tongues before the throne. He's able to just look at them with his eyes and see, oh, everybody, every ethnicity has an opportunity to be here. That God is indeed not a respect of, of persons. <clears throat> It's an unbiblical concept, friend, to be sit here and prefer people because of their ethnic background, because of their race. <clears throat> One, because we see everybody's going to be where they're, uh, that everybody from every race is going to be in heaven. So it's unbiblical right there. But we could also look back and see that everybody came from the same people. That's what people need to get. We all came from the same people. Go to Acts chapter 17. Actually, you know what? Just... Um, no, go to Acts 17. We'll go there. I'll wrap it up. But we all, it's unbiblical because every nation, kindred, and tongue is going to be in heaven. It's unbiblical because of the fact that every nation, kindred, and tongue all came from just a few people. Yep. More than once, by the way. Right. You know, Noah would be the first example, right? Remember how God destroyed everybody except Noah and his sons and their wives? Mm -hmm. That means we all came from Noah. You know, so what does it matter what color we are? We all have a common ancestor. His name's Noah. And even before that, we can go back to Adam. Before the flood. You know, all the racist, the pre-flood racists were a bunch of idiots too because they all had Adam as one common ancestor. And look here in Acts chapter 17, look at verse 24. God, verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein Seeing that he is Lord of heaven and, and earth, dwelleth not in temple made with hands, neither is worship with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing that he giveth light all, uh, to all life and breath and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth. God, every single nation that you see, every group of people, every ethnicity are all made of one blood. One person. We all have that same source of where we came from. You go back far enough down your family tree, not that you can, it's impossible to do because it just gets so mixed up and just there's no, there aren't records, right? But if you were to able to go back that far, you know what? We're all related to some degree. We all come from the same person. We all come from one blood. <clears throat> and you know what? Here's the thing. Go to Psalm chapter 133. I'll end on this thought. You know, I'm glad that we have different ethnicities in this world. I'm glad that we have different backgrounds. Because variety is the spice of life, right? And I was thinking about, you know, what I'm trying to make, the point I'm trying to make here is that, you know, we can all be different in our backgrounds. You know, we can come from, we can all be, have a different ethni ethnic background, but we can all still be united in the same belief. Yeah. You know, well, I, you know I, can, I can go soul winning with uh, a, 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 my, a soul winner who's black. I can go soul winning with a, a, a friend who is Hispanic. I can go soul winning with the white guy. Right. I can go soul winning with any ethnicity because we all have the same motive, the same belief. So our ethnic backgrounds, you know, to, to, to divide on those lines, it's carnal, it's base, it's, in, it's not right. Yeah. And I'm glad that we have ethnicities. I'm glad that God, hey, quit talking right now. Shut your mouths. I'm glad that we have that background. And I was trying to think about the best way to, to express my gratitude for this. And really, there's just no other better way for a Baptist to express that when, than when it comes to the area of food. <laughs> think about all the foods you love. 
How do we describe the foods that we love? Oh, I don't know, Mexican food? <laughs> Italian food? Chinese food? Ah! Japanese food? Uh, although, no. <laughs> but if you like it, that's fine, right? I don't know what white people food is. I guess maybe Italian, you know, they, that would be that, but, you know, Midwestern food, burgers, that's exactly what I was thinking. Now, can you imagine if we were just all Midwesterners? That there were no, you know, uh, carne asadas? That it was just steak? I mean, steak's good, but just steak and meat and potatoes and steak and meat and potatoes and burgers, just all, all this beef. But then I got to thinking, it's kind of good illustration because the Midwesterner, you know, they have beef, you know, they have their steak, they have their version of it. But then so do Mexicans, you know, they have the carne asada, they do it a different way, you know. And every culture that, I, you know, Chinese have their form to fried chicken, mm -hmm. you know. You can get uh, the, the honey dipped fried wings at a Chinese restaurant, mm, they're good. <laughs> but every culture, every ethnicity has a form of fried chicken. But you know what, at the end of the day, it's all fried chicken. You know, we can all you know, agree on the fact that it's fried chicken. So, you know, we have a lot of different varieties, but at the end of the day, it's all the same thing. You know, we all have different takes on beef, but it's still beef at the end of the day. And it's kind of the same way with, you know, us as human beings. You know, we might look different. We might have a different seasoning, right? We might be prepared a little differently. Maybe we're served up and we, we, we appear a little different. You know, we, we come, might come in the form of a hot dog <laughs> or in a tortilla shell or uh, with noodles, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's meat that's in there. It's still beef. It's still the same substance. It just looks a little different. <clears throat> Is that not a good analogy? Damn, I mean, you were really struggling until I put it to you like that, right? <laughs> now you get you're like, I see, yeah, perfect, <laughs> right? Look there in Psalm 133. This is the problem with partiality, whether it's along the lines of ethnicity or economic standing or whatever you want to, 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 to divide over, you know, is that it causes division where there shouldn't be any. And look at Psalm 133, verse 1. And when we, don't have diver, divi when we have division, we miss out on something very good in unity. Unity is a great thing. It's how you get things done. And how you have you develop you know dear relationships that are meaningful in your life. Look at Psalm one thirty three verse one. Behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. He, and there's an exclamation point at the end. You know I didn't do it justice. He's saying, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's a good thing. It's a pleasant thing. We should want it, and not say and do and think things that are going to cause division along any line, whether it's skin color or education or income, whatever it is. He says in verse 2, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments as the dew of Hermon, as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. What a beautiful passage. A beautiful, moving, poetic passage of the Word of God about what? About unity. So we need to value unity and we need to, to you know, shun. If there's anything we're going to shun, it should be this, this carnal thinking of preferring one above another right. and division. You know, we need to embrace what makes people unique in whatever area and focus on the work that we've been given. Focus on what brings us together, the gospel, the preaching to every kindred and every tongue and every nation under earth. Let's go ahead and pray.